Rich Palanducci with Live Science chatting with Joshua Tetrick, the founder of Hampton Creek. It's a biotech food company looking to change the future of food production. But before we get to the future, let's discuss the current state of affairs regarding animal-based food production and why it's unsustainable. Yeah, so let's really take a look at it. So using eggs, the cheapest, most abundant source of animal protein in the world, what's the deal? So 1.8 trillion of them are laid every year and 99% of all of those chicken eggs, no matter where they're laid, whether in Birmingham or Beijing, are laid in exactly the same place, places that I think are pretty broken. These are industrial warehouses lined with cages on either side of the facility. In each individual cage, you have nine birds crammed together in a small space about the size of an iPad for every single bird for two years. Those birds live in those cages for two years, and for two years, they gorge out on antibiotic-laden soy and corn, which require a whole lot of land and water and fertilizer, which requires a lot of oil, so lots of energy inputs. We have the animal welfare issue. And it's pretty unsafe, too, because you can imagine if, if you took me, you, and six of our friends, and you put us in a bathtub and locked the door for two years, someone's going to get sick. And that's what we're seeing with animals, right? We see avian flu outbreaks. We see salmonella, salmonella outbreaks. And as a company, Hampton Creek looks at that, and we think it's just bizarre. We think it's gross. We think it's unsustainable. And, man, we think we can do better. I hope you could do better than the 76 million people who get food poisoning every year, no doubt from food safety-related issues. It is. Food safety is a big, big issue. And we're seeing it, you know, even more relevant today, I think. You know, Google avian flu outbreaks and see how many Google search, search results. You get Saudi Arabia, China, India, Mexico recently. Google salmonella outbreaks. Last year, half a billion eggs were recalled because of salmonella poisoning. You know, something's a little bit off in the system. And instead of trying to incrementally improve something, like trying to make a horse and buggy go faster, why not just invent a car and just do it all together better? And that car would improve upon the scene I'll wager most Americans would rather not think about one of the animal cruelty involved in our animal-based food production process. Yeah, you know, we think the big way to change this actually isn't changing behavior and perception. It's just by making something better. So for example, take my dad, who I love to death. He lives in Springfield, Missouri. Uh, he knows about animal cruelty pretty well. I tell him about it. He knows about climate change. I've talked to him all about the science, and I think he accepts it, thankfully. Um, you know, he knows about these food safety issues, but guess what? It doesn't affect his purchasing decisions. He still goes on buying the same cookies and the same milk and the same eggs. But I think our approach is to create food that is fundamentally better for someone like my dad, which is to say, when he's trying to buy mayo, we want mayo that's more affordable and tastes as good or better. When he's buying cookies, we want cookies that are more affordable, that last longer. When he's buying a dozen eggs for $1.49, the middle point of uh, next year, he's going to see our product for 59 cents. And he's not going to choose us because he cares a lot about the world for the same reason that he's not choosing the unsustainable thing because he doesn't care about the world. He's just choosing it because it's the easy thing to do. And we can make the easy thing the thing that's actually better. And that easy and better thing can also taste good and be affordable. Yeah, they taste good and it saves them money. And no matter you know, what um, I think anyone says, those two drivers in the world of food are going to be true today and they're going to be true tomorrow. It better taste good and it better be affordable if you really want to change things. Otherwise, you're just fighting on the fringes. It seems to me you're approaching this from two vantage points. Firstly, you're producing a product that people will like and like for whatever reason, really, because it tastes good or that it's cheaper or that it's better for you or the environment. And secondly, you seem to be trying to make a better business model from the ground up. The product in question costs less to produce, uses less resources, produces less waste, all of which makes for a pretty attractive investment. But the product also ends up being affordable, competitive, lasts longer. Seems like a no-brainer in terms of finding investment capital. Yeah, that's it. Better is what really matters. It's not about replicating. It's not trying to make the existing system just a little bit better. It's about creating a whole new one. 
again in the same way the electricity came around and it was first called the gas light substitute. Um, but eventually electricity came and, and won because it was just better, it was easier, it was more convenient. It ended up being more affordable and even safer for people's lives. And that's how I think we really solved the problem of 9 billion people on this planet by 2050 eating in a way that actually sustained the environment instead of degrading it. We just got to be better. And at the heart of what you do, your labs, as opposed to the pens that house chickens, are not a frightening place that would turn people off. It seems more like better living through biochemistry. Well, you know, the heart of what we do is to recognize that there are plants that are growing in Canada, in the Midwest, across the country, and in over 40 countries around the world of which we explored that are just amazing. So take, you know, the plant that's in our mayo is a great example. It's a particular species of a yellow pea, not a green pea, but a yellow pea. And we found it. Um, it's not manipulated. It's not engineered. It's just a yellow pea. And it's also just phenomenal. And we use that not in a way that is scary or anything else. We just, we put it in our mayo and it's better than a chicken egg and doing what a chicken egg does. And I think it's up to us to, to have the, you know, the explorer mentality, to have the curiosity to question the status quo and to, to dig deeper into this world of plants and find more and more to, to hopefully move the world a little bit uh, better in a faster way. Well, obviously the likes of Bill Gates agrees with you, but still there's gotta be some marketing challenges in getting folks to buy an eggless omelet. So I think it depends on what we're talking about. So the first product that we released is, it's mayonnaise. It's called Just Mayo. Uh, we found it pretty easy. You know, we're just selling mayo. Um, and most people just buy it because it tastes good. It's an affordable thing. That's it. Now, when it gets a little bit more complicated now when you get to a product called Just Scramble, which is coming out next year. This is a plant that we've identified. You throw it in a pan and it scrambles up. Then there's some more challenges, right? And I think the best way for us to deal with it is to say, you know, one of our values as a company is radical openness. And if you want to visit the farmers that are, that are growing these crops, please, we want to introduce you. If you want to come meet our team, come on down. Say hi to them. See what they're doing. Um, and also being radically more affordable. And we think being more affordable and being open about what we do is a, is a pretty good counterpoint uh, to the current state of play in egg production. Yeah, affordability certainly works, as does not being a threat to the environment or to the great American farmer. Far from wanting to put them out of business, farmers could simply switch over to growing the kind of plants your products call for. A hundred percent. You know, a farmer's interest isn't in growing soy and corn to feed birds crammed together in tiny cages. That's not why a farmer likes to be a farmer. A farmer wants to be a farmer because they love the land, they respect the land, they care about the soil, and they want to grow food to feed people. That's why a farmer does what a farmer does. And I think if we can provide that farmer new crops, new ways of doing things that are ultimately better for their livelihood, well, you know, I think that's part of the reason we, we have some pretty incredible support in the farming community. It sounds as though these products are good for everyone from the start, you know, through to the end of their life cycle. That's right. And that's, that's how I think food in the world wins when we make the good thing the thing that happens to be the most affordable and the thing that tastes the best. I think that's how, that's how the world really moves forward. Well, that's quite the business model. If I'm interested in finding out more, where can I go for more information? Just check us out on HamptonCreekFoods.com. Uh, our Facebook page, we'd love to hear from you and go into your local Whole Foods and, and taste uh, Just Mayo all for yourself. Joshua Tetrick with Hampton Creek Foods, thank you very much for your time today. We really appreciate it. Thanks. I'm Rich Bonaducci for Live Science. <laughs>